Okay, so this is an intro and a bit of an overview of the Shiny app. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing we do is we upload some transactions. So in this case, I've actually got a CBA account and I've got an ING account, although I don't use it too much, and a PayPal account as well. And once again, all these numbers have been dummied up, okay? So you upload the transactions. And one little nifty thing I've got is I've made it so you can upload these to a specific Google Sheet. So you can see here the these four tables are being uploaded. So we no longer need the blank one. And we can see that the transactions have been all appended and formatted in a, in a certain way. And now we've got the task of specifying the keywords and their categorizations because going forward, transactions with those keywords will be automatically given those categories as a suggested category okay so we go and do quite a few here so i pick out my salary not my real salary um okay and then what do we get next uh yep i think i oh, yep, have some a parking a parking bill so the trick is to get as many of these um you know recurring expenses as possible there's my uh, gym membership, personal training. That's why it's so much. <laughs> and this is actually a local brewery that I go to. Uh, and it's also a co-working place as well. It's a great place. Okay, so we can swap the, the source of data from Google Sheets. So now it's being brought down, okay? But immediately after, we want to send it back up because now it's been processed and it's also the columns have shifted slightly. So now we're in the actual uh, correct uh, setup for the columns. But here, if we go and uh, filter and we filter to keywords, we can see that uh, many more transactions have been identified to have those keywords. So if we just select the ones that haven't been confirmed, we can put a one in this column and then it will take on the suggested categorization. So this is this confirmation process. So once again, we download. And now, um, if we upload once again, we can see they've actually been confirmed. So that's great. Um, yeah. Okay, but we still got a fair bit of categorization to do for this fortnight worth of data. So um, as I say here, you know, often people are most comfortable and most efficient to use Excel for these categorizations. And the process is exactly the same, but um, I sort of suspect it'd be much, much quicker. Okay, so we go through here, and ah, oh, yeah, there's Uber, $9.50. Good old cheap Uber chick, uh, trip. What else do we do? Okay, so that's sort of the process you go through to categorize the transactions. So, you know, we could start from that, that, that file, but I've actually gone ahead and done all the categorization previously. So if we go ahead and use that file instead. So I think I store it here, yep. Okay. So with a whole bunch of categorizations already done, um, if we go to the expenses tab, we don't have too much data to see. But if we, if we flip to just expenses, we can see the, the cumulative spend um, over time. Now, one week is a lot higher than the other week because of probably a rent or something. Yeah, so rent payment's gone out and so has a, um, a Medibank so private cover's gone out. So we might, all we're really limited to seeing is maybe the eating out. You know, we can see that this week uh, we spent uh, 169 and the previous week we spent uh, 216. And that's a daily spend rate of 24 versus 31. Um, but we haven't got much, um, we haven't got any more information to work with to get monthly or, or fortnightly uh, amounts. Um, we can see all, all records, that's one thing, um, and get the, the daily rate for based on all records, so that's pretty useful as well. But we really need to get uh, more data categorized. So um, we can go back and add in some additional transactions. So now I'm uploading uh, some more transactions. So this is uh, the preceding two months worth of data. Okay, and then once again, I download the Excel file. So that's kept the old transactions. 
and added in the new transactions. So we have, as I say, let's see what percentage of the new transactions have actually been assigned to keywords. So I do a little check here in a second. Oh wait, before I decide to do it. So we see a whole bunch of keywords have been detected. That's good. So we've got, what does it say? Uh, 341 new transactions. And then of those, um, 200 or 199 uh, have um, got keywords associated with them. So that's roughly 60%, which is um, yeah, pretty good. So that saved us a lot of legwork. And then we can pretty much go ahead and confirm, um, you know, using the filtering in Excel, it's very easy to, you know, double check these, you know, sorting, sorting by keyword, and then just, just confirming that all the transactions are actually what you've uh, confirmed them to be. But yeah, obviously still got a bunch of transactions. I think it's like 160 transactions to go ahead and confirm. Um, but as you know, as you have more and more keywords that the work gets substantially less because you go to new places, yeah, fewer times, I guess. Okay, so what happens next? Um, what am I doing here? Okay, so what we've got is we've got to assign uh, category level two and three. And um, uh, so yeah, these these are the forecast uh, the forecasted transaction based on the categories, but we can go ahead and, and assign level two and level three categories uh, to each level one. Okay, and so level one sort of like a what is it, you know, and that can be general or very specific. So once again, I've done all this before, so we can actually just utilize utilize that file instead. Okay, so that is that's a file with all the um, categorizations done, and for forecasting, I've also um, yeah I've, I've set certain things to have a schedule. So we go again, and we can bring in that that file, and just before I show you the um, the forecast, I'd also like to show you how with all the categorization and the additional data, we can see a lot more in the expenses tab. So we can see, you know, uh, fortnightly and monthly averages and expenses. So we've just got a lot more, with more data comes a more accurate assessment of our weekly spend. So for example, you know, the current uh, weekly spend was 1143 and the previous was 1246. Now, um, there is there is a holiday in the mix there. so paying for that holiday probably shouldn't be taken into account um, as a regular sort of spend but we can also see sort of the fluctuation of our of our spend rate uh, over time so we can have a sense of how realistic this figure is going forward all right so let's get back to the forecasting so we can see here um, the irregularity so rent is bumping up every month and at a certain time and electricity as well as a much subtler month as every every two months that is and if we add in you know our savings to begin with we can actually see our net a net position you know after six months so that's that is pretty nifty 